Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This week, we're going to be talking about the brand new con exclusive news and we're going to build up some hype for the Disney Plus set as Scott Porter posted some stuff about it. We're also going to answer some listener questions. I'm your sexy ranch man, co host Calderness. This is episode 407. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, oh yeah. six oh, people yeah. think I am funny. It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey Google, the back some more. Let's attack him. Wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me, like always, in the studio is the Dial H for Hero Clicks champion, Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Oh, you know, just existing. Existing. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> what made you happy this week, my man? All right. Well, I want to say that I've been catching up on Disney Plus shows, but I've used Disney Plus the last two weeks, so I'm going to change it up. Okay. Okay. Uh, that does make me happy. It does make me happy that uh, I'm barely paying more for it right now. Maybe that'll change. Um, but yeah, the access to some stuff that I'm interested in, it's like 10% of what they have I'm interested in, um, is nice. Uh, so what made me happy this week, what actually made me happy this week was last night was our Thursday night, as of this recording last night, uh, Thursday night Hero Clicks, and it was a interesting, fun little build. I just played like some 400 point Golden Age kind of stuff. Uh, I think it actually all was Silver Age, technically, Silver Age legal stuff. Um, but yeah, we've got a good group growing. Uh, we've got some new people some people that are returning to the game after like a long period away from it. And it was just a lot of fun games. So yeah, it was nice to, to get away from work and actually enjoy myself with uh pleasant people. How many, uh, how many people were there last night? It was two, four, six, seven. We had seven. Okay. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. It wasn't too bad. So, um, yeah, I, we normally get about six or seven, but yeah. the rotation of like who shows up determines, you know, uh, like around sealed yeah, or pre-release cool characters. Yeah, we've got yeah. we've got a different cast that comes every so often, um, and a few people that have like come once and then I haven't seen them again. But I assume that they'll come again. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right on. You always hope so, right? Um. This week, what made me happy, uh, I was in Rochester, Minnesota for some stuff, but while I was there, I had time to do uh, a little bit of toy hunting and checking out some stores and everything, uh, which is always fun. I, growing up, like, that's all I ever wanted to do on family vacation was just try to convince my parents to go to, like, a comic shop or anything, a game store, and obviously, they never did. Um, so it was cool to be like, yeah, this is my trip. I get to go where I want to go. Uh, so I, I went to a few different uh, shops. I went to D6 Gaming. The only Heroclix I found all day was at D6 Gaming. They did not run Heroclix events. They did not have Heroclix on the shelves, but they had an Empire starter set. And I asked the guy, and I was like, hey, does anyone play Heroclix in the area? Do you, I even asked him, do you have any Heroclix in the store? And he was like, nope. No, we don't. And I was like, okay. In my mind, I'm like, D6 Gaming, huh? What a joke. <laughs> like, one of the few games that uses... Pu- well, I'm not going to say one of the few games. D6 is the most common form of dice. But still, like, you... But, like, it, playing, specifically playing, that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But like, speci- specifically called D6 Gaming, and a game that is specifically 2D6 for, like... Or, you know, all you need is 2D6 to play it. Ironic. You, you don't have... <laughs> number one, that you didn't know you had any on the shelf, which is weird. Uh, number two... That you don't run events. Uh, so that was sad. And then, yeah, I picked up some cool stuff, though. I got a... Uh, I just met so many wacky, fun characters in Rochester. It was so weird. Like, everyone I talked to, I went to, like, a GNC once. And the dude behind the counter was just, like, a super friendly guy. Uh, that was cool. 
I went to, gosh, what what store was it? There was like another store where like the clerk was just also like a super cool like down to earth person had a good like fun. oh uh James G- games by James that's what it was, um they also didn't have any hero clicks they were a very generic family type game store and yeah. had like nothing well hero too clicks isn't made there. by James so it's not made by James he only you're sold right games made by James made by James of course yeah. yeah it definitely wasn't the name of the guy that owns the store absolutely not <laughs> um. But, like, my little brother bought, like, a pack of Pokemon cards. And, and the guy behind the counter goes, yeah, Pokemon's pretty cool. It's no magic, but it's pretty cool. I'm like, whoa, whoa, hold up. You're implying that magic is, like, good in any way, shape, or form. And that, number two, <laughs> it is better than Pokemon. I, I regret to inform you, sir, that both of those statements are false. Uh, let's hold off. <laughs> but it was just, like, the way it was just, like, well, it's no magic. And I'm like, is that, is that a thing to be, to really say? we be proud of magic as a society yeah as that's the that's the gold standard when it comes to is it card games I, mean, I get it like technically for anyone that's typing right now and about to make fun of me or about to like take huge offense to it i've been pretty critical of magic in the past it is bad it is the worst uh but if you're about to say well it's the number one selling tcg shut up shut up i don't care it's still I, I say things like that though i'm like you yeah. know sudoku is really fun but uh it ain't no solitaire did you just call it Sudoku? Dudoku? <laughs> Sudoku. That's, I think Sipuku? that's how it. <laughs> that... <laughs> There it is. But no, yeah, I just, I enjoyed uh, toy hunting, going around. I Oh, yeah, there's another guy at like this one machine shed. It's like a video game store. I got Super Mario World for 20 bucks. I was pretty happy with that. Um, and I got Ultimate Casey Jones for 40 bucks. Most stuff of him on eBay is like 50 bucks. So I was cool with that, getting that action figure. Yeah, it was just a fun time, toy hunting, going around. I sort of like filmed videos for it. I don't know. I I might do a, a toy hunting side channel. Who who knows? I doubt it. Uh, but we'll see. I just wanted to film stuff, probably because I was itching to film stuff. So, yeah, that was a good time. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump right into news. Is right around the corner with the first day of spring this week, and with summer comes conventions, and with conventions comes convention exclusives. Tell me about that. <laughs> All right, yeah, <laughs> HeroClicks 2022 summer convention <clears throat> exclusives. Uh, it's gonna be a hot click summer, is what I've heard. That's a throwback to a joke from like 2019. Yep. Uh, let's see, so. WizKid says, HeroClix fans, with convention season quickly approaching, the HeroClix team is excited to share our initial plans. So, initial plans, they might change, subject to change. Whether you're a collector or avid player, we'll have something for you in 2022. So, first up, they're going to be, in some capacity, at uh, in July at San Diego Comic Con. Now, this is a con that I've never gone to, and honestly, I don't ever want to. Like, just from, like, seeing the sheer mass of traffic and stuff just does not sound like a great time to me. Um, Maybe, like, like Vegas, go to it once just to see it, just to, like, take it in. Be like, yep, I did that. Um, At that con, they will have the previously previewed-ish sculpt and figure of the Phoenix Sentinel. So the Phoenix Sentinel says, a colossal threat to the X-Men, straight from the worst parts of Mojo World. The Phoenix Sentinel, perfect for fighting the mutant threat or giving your Heroclix team a cosmic boost. Oh, I hate it. Thanks, I hate it. Cosmic keyword, giant figure, cosmic. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a cosmic robot. Hits all the right uh, things. Uh, I I believe it's going to have the same dial as Dark Phoenix, so it's just going to perpetually be in modern except this one will have robot keyword instead of x-men wow (laughs) and then also at san diego comic-con will be the batman and catwoman uh wedding promo figure so batman and catwoman together at last this hero clicks figure brings the incredible cover to life on the tabletop things that the phoenix sentinel could potentially do um probably some like running shot psychic blast poison those guys, I mean, we've seen enough Sentinels and we've seen enough Phoenixes to you can pretty much do anything with them. And then maybe some sort of like rebirth click, but I 
don't think so because phoenixes usually don't get that kind of thing anymore uh something the bat batman and catwoman wedding promo could do uh making me uncomfortable perplex outwit mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. stealth mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. i have mm-hmm. no clue uh it'll be interesting to see once like somebody that first person that gets there and gets the dial uh, posted online it'll be interesting to see what that actually does also it would be interesting to see how old this figure was designed like if this was designed in like 2020 um it'll just be one of those like over costed pieces like the eternal set i think this is all new stuff i hope so we're at least new to us you know yeah, I hope we still so, haven't seen you know? there's still like a handful of previously previewed cons that we have not seen um, oh, like that there Ares was, and stuff. There's that Ares yeah. and then the Punisher with like the Avengers equipment. We have not seen. Oh, that's r- or, that ooh, stuff. and that Spider Man too. That yeah, weird Spider Man. Yeah, I forgot about all that stuff. I, someone it's had easy that to forget though, about right? because like someone in like Mexico or, or like Brazil has that Punisher because that's where we saw that right that Punisher and Spider Man. I totally forgot about that stuff. That was like Hank Pym helmet Punisher. Yeah, or, like Captain America shield. Yeah. Hawkeye bow. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Where are they Man. at? Where <laughs> What's they going at? on? Where are they at? You can't make the same excuses like that people do for wave two of WWE yeah. because they definitely still have the intellectual property to Marvel. Like they're obviously Marvel, pumping yeah. out Marvel stuff. So where and why have we not heard anything on these? Man, we just brought that to the forefront and they were like, <laughs> Hey, we wanted everyone to forget about that. <laughs> How dare you? Okay. Yeah. That's, Turns out they were radioactive, so we had to dump them all in a giant pile of sand in New Mexico. Yeah. Uh, Next up, the next convention, so July, San Diego. uh, Next up is August, Gen Con. Uh, They're going to go back to Gen Con summer, and they're going to provide more information as the dates get closer, of course. But including you'll get all the promos at San Diego will also be available here at Gen Con, and also these these three for the first time. Uh, The DC Comics... Harley Quinn. It looks like a regular Harley Quinn. Uh, How is Harley's hammer? Like a telescope? It'll help your opponent see stars. (laughs) Hilarious. So funny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Spider-Hulk. Hulk Hulk finds a new host, the amazing Spider-Man. Bruce Banner may be free of the Hulk, but the rest of us aren't. Uh, That's kind of a neat. Different different sculpts. Uh, Big old dude swinging around. It'll be cool to get a Spider-Hulk, because there was... Or slash is a Spider Hulk already. Yeah. This one, the sculpt's better. I don't know. The sculpt's different. Yeah. Let's just hope he doesn't have a leap climb top dial like the previous one. Oh gosh, yeah. The next up is the Heroclix Fantastic Thor's four figure starter set, or just not just four figure set. Fantastic Thor's are members of the Thor Corps who helped defend Battleworld's shield during its final siege. Find out for yourself how they'll defend your team. Ooh, there's a little some cheeky stuff there. Uh, kind of neat. Uh, with these, we have, like, the Thing as Thor, Invisible Woman as Thor, Weird Flamey Thor, Human Torch, and then this is probably the weirdest one, All Silver, Mr. Fantastic. Like, Silver Surfer looking... I don't know. I never read the story. I've got no idea. Yeah, I honestly... Yeah, I also... Have not really read cool. this particular story. The only like, Fantastic so Four cool. that I was aware of in Battle World was like the carryover from the Six One Six universe. So I right. do not remember this at all. It's neat. Let's speculate on pricing. Uh, Phoenix Sentinel probably fifty. Okay, yeah. Um, Batman Catwoman duo probably fifteen. 20. Harley fifteen. Twenty. Oh, twenty. You think twenty on those? I think they're going to do it at twenty. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. For whatever reason, yeah. I think so. Uh, Fantastic Thors. Are we taking 20 times 4? No. I think 60. Okay. I wouldn't want to I could get behind 60. 60. If there's I two out of the 60. four that are solid, I could get behind 60. Um, yeah. Also, just kind of cool sculpts if you like shelving really pieces. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, next up is going to be in September. WizKids World Championships. So you heard it here first, except you didn't. Um, They are going to return to Graceland in Memphis, Tennessee. uh, Full event details coming soon. 
hopefully, because you'll have to start booking rooms and stuff. Uh, in addition to the promos available from earlier in the convention season, so the, all the previous mentioned ones, players will also get the following convention exclusives. Uh, we've got Ashley Barton from the Old Man oh, Logan dude. universe. This is the Spider Girl. I don't really remember oh, what she you know was what, called. You know what her actual name is? No. But we'd have to bleep it, but it's Spider Bit. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember yeah, yeah. that now. Yep, um, she, that's what she called herself, yeah. So the Old Man Logan run, she's a very, very small part. Almost non-existent. Uh, but it, it says like fighting along Ladnier. other spider totems. So I'm assuming she was part of the Spider-Verse kind of stuff. Probably. Yeah. Um, she, I don't even know if she has powers, but I didn't read her in any Spider-Verse stuff. I and Old Man Logan, she she's does. literally just like the kingpin. She's in charge of that weird gladiator fighting arena yeah. that Hawkeye and Logan get into. And this is a very iconic pose she's doing, but in this pose, she is swinging a shotgun. Uh, she's like swinging the handle of a shotgun at somebody, and I think she like beheads somebody with it, or at least like hits them really hard in the head. But in this one, it's just like a lead pipe or something. I'm pretty sure in the comics she like swings a shotgun or like whatever. Pretty cool. So she is the force from the future. She's the youngest, um, or she's Peter Parker's youngest daughter, Tanya. And Hawkeye's child, which robbed oh, the cradle there, Clint. That's a little um, creepy. Yeah, because yeah. Peter's <laughs> quite a bit younger, younger than Hawkeye. Quite a bit but, younger than Hawkeye. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it is post-apocalyptic world, so I guess I don't. I don't know. There's really, uh, but yeah, she. So since she is do, I guess. partially spider infused, she does have okay. like superhuman agility, wall crawling, and superhuman strength. I guess. Um, but yeah, so. And daddy issues. Like, every good <laughs> fighter so. person should. Yeah, the blind Hawkeye. Um, next up is uh, Punchline from DC. I'm assuming it's a Joker r- version of, like, Robin. Because it's, like, the the Joker and then the Punchline. I don't know. Uh, the little tagline says, Punchline went from a troubled teen to following the ideology of a madman. That's Ooh. all they say about it. She um, reeks of like everything I hate about new characters in comics. <laughs> honestly, I just but, hope okay. that there's at least one person out there that really is like excited for this. I think I've already seen a few comments where people were excited for this. Uh, okay. I don't follow DC close enough. I'm like usually a couple years behind, so this character I have never heard of. Um, but I'm assuming it's going to be like Dick Grayson's style in some capacity with maybe some some flavor text or something. Uh, We get another Phoenix. This is the warp world Phoenix, um, which is like some sort of mechanical version of Phoenix with somebody writing it. I have no idea who these, Oh, it says Gamora's attempts to rewrite reality birthed warp world with heroes like Phoenix. Your adventures will be twice as exciting. So we've already gotten some warp world chases. Um, If I had to guess, I would say, Something like uh, Morgan Le Fay combined with Phoenix because that's she's cool. driving like or, or driving. She's riding on like a dragon sort of thing. And that's Morgan Le Fay is like the only character I can think that does that. She, she kind does of that kind of stuff. Pose thing. I don't know. I could look it up. I have, real quick. I have no idea. I have um, no idea who it would be. Let's see. Um, Warp World Phoenix. Just so I'm not completely wrong. Um, Phoenix showed up, blah, 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 flies on winged Phoenix. That's the unusual feature. Um, powers, seemingly those of Jean Grey and those of Phoenix Force. Oh, wait. <laughs> so wait, so Jean it's Grey Jean Grey? Earth 616, those of the Phoenix Force, Earth 616, and of Magneto. Oh. Okay, so it's like a... Like Polaris? With the Phoenix I guess. Force? Or is it just, or is it just Jean Grey who can also... Yeah, I mean the, the the phoenix is metal. I guess that's of note. It's like a golden. Yeah, so thing. that would yeah that would make sense why it looks like a robot is. Um, she's like constructing it out of right her metal powers. Um, interesting. Mm. I how oh, odd. Yeah, but anyhow, another phoenix character, and then finally we the last thing we get is the DC Comics Hero Clicks Dark Knight's Death Metal Wonder Woman. So Ooh. Death Metal was. Ooh. The series that came after the the metal series, um, right? And this is where trying trying to cash in, trying to cash in. Yeah, I think this is um, again. I'm behind on DC. Um, there's like a metal 
quite literally a metal in the DC universe that can counteract the like evil metal that is all the chases oh, that we got from Rebirth. Vibranium. Yeah, that's the one. It's like Uru or something. Uh, <laughs> no, but like it is whatever. I think it's whatever metal, the, the nth metal that uh, Hawkman's like stuff is made out of. The, oh, sure. The, yeah. I, I, I think that's what it is. I vaguely know that. I don't remember. But it gets all magified and transforms them into like better versions or like whatever. I don't know. Again, this is yeah. <laughs> this is from my very basic knowledge, which comes mostly from scanning like the covers. Um, speaking of scanning the covers, this is Wonder Woman's like holding the chainsaw, so she's all powered up to battle people with a chainsaw. So, yeah, it's cool Dude, looking. It's, she wielded the lasso of truth chainsaw. I'm like, wait, now that doesn't make a lot of sense. Lasso and chainsaw are two very different things. I don't know how they can be <laughs> the exact same. Is the chainsaw blade magically infused with the lasso of truth? Is that is that what this is? Is that yes. what is happening? I don't know. It's a goofy chainsaw. Like it's like a sword chainsaw thing. So it, yeah. it doesn't make. It's any got sense. like a hand it's... grip that's like yeah, a bracer kind of thing. I don't um, know. It's interesting. I'm down for it. For as far as alternate versions of Wonder Woman go, this isn't my favorite, especially chainsaw versions because there's there's one that has a a Dead Rising esque chainsaw, but it's like secured to a stop sign like very yeah. cool dead rising like wonder woman that i i really digged that version of it this this is still cool and i might pick it up because i am for some reason addicted to characters that have chainsaws and i i do quite enjoy enjoy me a good chainsaw so that is pretty neat yeah i just uh, hope that this doesn't kill um our chances of getting like a dark knight's metal kind of set like a more I think fleshed out set this, because this could be a precursor to a chase theme. Uh, I don't think in the next DC set, I think guaranteed the next chase theme for the next one is going to be more Legion of Doom. But I think the one after it, uh, sort of a AC, a Kingdom Come type way, how some of those were LEs, some of those were chases. I think maybe next chase theme after this next set, or maybe even half of that chase theme, could be the good guys of. Dark Knights, yeah. hardcore metal, or so whatever death metal. The the other trinity of this, I don't know what's going on with like Superman in this one, but Batman's like got like a spawn kind of cloak with like it's like a biker jacket <laughs> with the collar popped and like spikes on his shoulders, and then he's holding a scythe. And then oh Superman's got like a, like one of his arms looks like Bizarro skin. I don't know Ooh, what that is, but he's got like a pair of brass knuckles. <laughs> So Whoa. looks like a Wonder Woman got like the most high tech weapon. Yeah, Batman rocking the scythe and Superman like, with the the harder punch. Do you, do you think of of every of any character ever in the entire universe? And you told me who who needs brass knuckles? I don't think in a million years I, I would say yeah. Superman really needs to punch harder. That guy needs brass knuckles for whatever. You know whatever that thing reason. that his skin is stronger than. You should wrap yeah. that around his skin so that he can punch people. <laughs> yeah, that's like the equivalent of putting the Hulk in Iron Man armor because... R right, ridiculous notion here. Yeah. I guess maybe he can fly, but it's like, oh, what if we gave uh, a Luke Cage a lead pipe? I'm like, why? Why would he need that? <laughs> He's Luke Cage. It's like, let's give uh, Luke Cage a bulletproof vest. And it's like, mm. fun fact about Luke Cage, doesn't need the bulletproof vest. I don't know if you know this. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. He's already bulletproof. Already quite bulletproof. <laughs> yeah, he's already good. Um, but okay, uh, these exclusives, Simeon. What is your most sought after? What is your least sought after? Oh. What is? Yeah, so, where are we ranking these? Because I, I like, like my 10. I like my big figs. So, yeah. in like order of top to bottom, it would be Phoenix Sentinel. Okay. Then it would be other Phoenix because it's a two by two. Right. Uh, then it would be Spider Hulk. Um. Probably Wonder Woman, Fantastic Thor's, okay. Ashley Barton, Punchline. These last four really don't matter, the order. Ashley Barton, oh. Punchline, Harley Quinn, and Batman Catwoman. Uh, the okay. Batman Catwoman would only be for like a shelf piece if I were to get it, unless it's like got some really strong dial for some reason, or a fun dial that does something interesting. But I honestly do not care about that issue. <laughs> that is... Not a relationship in comics that I care about yeah. at all. So, fantasy. 
Uh, as far as my ranking would go, I'm pretty lukewarm on all of these. Wonder Woman is like the highest, and even then, if she isn't, uh, if she isn't easily available to me, like cheap, or if she doesn't like do anything like really cool with the chainsaw, I'll probably still pass on her. But she would be my most wanted, second most wanted, Ashley Barton, if she is more so the gladiator in charge of the whatever old man Logan heavy, or if she has a. I don't think she would get the longest road trip trait, but if she has something similar, like something cool like that, I would be interested in that. Uh, but then after that, everything else is like, I don't, I don't care. Punchline, I don't care. Phoenix is, I don't care. Harley Quinn, no thank you. No thank you. Spider Hulk, no thank you. Fantastic Thor is no thank you. Batman, Catwoman, making out, no thank you. So it's really just yeah. Wonder Woman and maybe Ashley Barton. It's still kind of still maybe Wonder Woman, maybe Ashley Barton. But yeah, these um these exclusives they don't uh, they don't do anything for me. I will say. They exist. A couple things of note. Um, these are um, actual sculpts that we're seeing, not digital renderings. That is cool. Do you notice how Ashley Barton's, she's not on like the new terrain. She's, it looks to be like she's Ooh. on the old style, uh, All right. like pig right. looking thing. Um, but yeah, Ooh. I will say knowing that, that these are not the digital renderings, these are like uh, studio images or whatever of like the actual <laughs> yeah. figures. Um they do look really good. Like even even the more boring ones, like Punchline and Harley Quinn and Ashley Barton, they yeah. you know they've got like some flow to them. They've got like some thematic action going on, and so those are cool. I I am excited to see more Warp World stuff. That gives me hope for like Arachnite and Soldier Supreme and like all the Warp World stuff that I like. Uh, so hopefully we can get out of the X Men realm of Warp Worlds and move on into uh, characters that are cool. The good uh, realm nice. of Warp World. <laughs> I'm not gonna say the good realm, but like characters I would care about, like you know Spider Man and Moon Knight. That's cool. Captain America, Doctor Strange. That's cool. Um, Iron Hammer, not as cool. Iron Man and Thor. It's like, uh, yeah. But like that kind of stuff is what I'm like curious to see from Warp World. Will you know? I'm so I'm, I'm excited that they're keeping it going, but. As far as like this stuff, yeah, I'm not jazzed. There, there's no Ultimate Warrior where it's like, yeah, I need to have it, gotta go, gotta get it. Like there is no, there isn't any yeah. of that. So it far. is cool I that really, if you ahead. can make it to one of these, so if you can be in San Diego Comic Con, you get probably what will be one of the most sought after ones. So you're like rewarded for that. Ooh. Um, Ooh. If you can't make it to there, uh, and you can go to like you're planning on going to Gen Con, you've got three more to choose from in addition to the other ones yeah and then if you just wait if you're willing to wait and you just go to graceland uh memphis then at all you can choose from all of them yeah so uh it's a pretty solid cool lineup thing. they're each only a month apart so even if so here's the thing by the time this is this is neat they're a month apart so Convention exclusives take a month to be legal from that month of the, their release. The first of the next month is when they're legal, right? So by the time it gets to Gen Con, Enix is legal. You know, Batman and Catwoman are legal. So, like, I don't know if they'll host any events at Gen Con. They didn't host any events last year at Gen Con. Uh, so we'll see. Mm -hmm. Again, I, I will say one interesting thing about this. Uh, not going to Origins. That's an interesting yeah. takeaway for me. No Origins here. No Origins uh, is strange. No nationals being announced. I know they said, or the ROC said, that nationals and all that stuff is going to be half points. But uh, so far, we only know about worlds. At the very least, for exclusives, this is not a confirmation or denying whether or not a nationals will happen. Or if it will be at Origins or not at Origins, it just means there are no new exclusives to announce. That's all it is. So it's just interesting. Just a little bit of a observation so we'll see we'll see what happens but you know something to keep in mind yeah for sure i got nothing else to say all right that means the the last part of news is i don't remember where this was shared was it shared on like instagram uh, or something it was shared on scott porter's facebook okay uh, i'm not friends with him on facebook it was his like facebook story uh, it was not okay. shared on his twitter um, um so yeah scott porter famous unboxer of hero clicks and uh little else um <laughs> uh he posted that uh soon he's got disney plus stuff in hand so he's got a brick 
which of course he will unbox. He's got the starter, uh, the token pack. I think he might have had one additional thing that I can't remember. Um, you know, WizKids will probably send him with a full list of if they have them, legacy cards, and then maybe additional chases so that he can show those off. Or, you know, what would make sense if they've just made sure that he had one of those God packs, since that's one of the big selling Uh, points of the set. I would like it. Um, That would be cool. So probably Monday, which would be, uh, let's see, March 28th. Yeah, March 28th. Um, probably going to be seeing a Scott Porter unboxing. If not, it'll be, you know, April 4th, like the first week of Good April. Yeah. yeah. Normally he shows stuff off. Sometimes he shows stuff off a little early, uh, but normally he shows right. it off like right before they so, do stuff. So yeah, typically it starts on Monday. Typically it's two to th- two weeks out from set release or pre-release. Right. Typically when he unboxes. So if it's this, it's Monday. That means pre-release is sometime. Pre-release is going to be sometime around the 13th of April, and then full set release around the 20th, 21st. I can't really remember. Um, yeah, which would be cool because that would mean um, like Battle Royales at PJ's yeah. event might have Disney Plus. Right. That'd be kind of fun. I would really enjoy that over what would be the anything other else honestly yeah. uh uh i would i don't even know i might even drop the event, <laughs> the event and be like all right i'm just gonna play brs all day yeah uh, it's freaking awesome um, yeah. so yeah and to go yeah, along we'll with disney plus we're, we're gonna speculate here a little right. bit more on what these characters right. might do uh what we might be able to expect from the set a little bit more uh now that i'm caught up on the disney plus stuff I have some opinions to go along yeah. with it. So uh, really quickly, uh, we do have like questions that we're, I'm just going to use real quick as, as we're going to answer them in doing this. So Alex says, it seems like Disney Plus Scott Porter unboxing is going to start on Monday. Uh, he wants each of us to pick a common or uncommon and kind of talk about what we think it'll do. So that's basically okay. exactly what we're going to do now. So yeah, yeah let's we'll start with common, uncommon, and let's talk about that. Simeon. Yeah, so I'm going to go okay. for my common let's see hey remember they stop at baron zima baron zima was the last common yeah i'm gonna go with i'm gonna go with hunter b15 okay so i'm gonna say they're gonna give tva pd team ability because they're kind of like time police so i'm gonna say and this is all like hero clicks bets uh none of this matters but it'll be interesting to see how close we are i'm gonna say that i'm gonna say She's going to have two point dials or two point costs, but I'll say one is uh, it's going to be like a red line thing where if you pay like 50 points, she's not KO'd when she goes across it. Otherwise, she is. And okay. it's going to be, again, spoilers for any Disney Plus stuff, probably. Um, it'll be when like Hunter B15 realizes the truth about the TVA and kind of goes on mm-hmm. like a jailbreak slash whatever um the baton because one of the more iconic things that we saw i don't know if it was in any of the trailers or not uh she when she hits loki with the baton and it like puts him in like stasis i'm gonna say she's gonna have some sort of ability to uh what's that thing where people can't move make people immobile immobile immobile. yeah i'll say she'll have something that makes people immobile uh i feel like immobile is the new version of capture since capture is just completely gone. Um, but it feels like yeah. she should have some sort of capture like ability. So I think that's maybe the closest we can get. And also I, be accurate. I would love it if it like took you off the map for like two turns, three turns or something, you know, that would be really neat. Um, was Hunter B15? Was she the one that it like attacked him right away? So her baton might be like the slow mo baton. You know, I don't know yeah, what that she would, she was the one translate. when he first escapes with the Tesseract. Yeah. She's the one that smacks him in the face. Don't ask me how that would translate <laughs> to yeah. your motion, but uh, it kind of. I mean, something like give him an action token, make him a mobile, like you know, any combination of like that could work. Um, yeah, True. some form of like phasing, although it would really suck but to yeah. have like top dial phasing, but like. I don't know some some form of phasing because 
the TVA do be just like teleporting all over the place. So I'm going to say I'm going to choose my man, Jimmy Woo. I think I think he has to get close up magic. Outwit perplex, special damage power, opening damage power. Um, but I would like him to sort of have I think he's also going to have just PD. He obviously works for the FBI. So I think that's fair enough to give the dude ability. But uh, I think he's going to be a very supporty figure, like a, a 40 to 30 like point range, heavily into like support, outwit, perplex, sidestep. I think him and Darcy could potentially have some kind of like shared trait where they get like clues or they figure out how to crack into something where maybe they can change the map a little bit. I don't know how. I don't know what that would like look like, but I would like to see something like, like that. Uh, where they like give them working, give them a friendly action, and they can give like a friendly character improved movement through blocking or something. I think yeah, I think that would be really cool. You know, where they can like help someone out. Um, but yeah, I I just want to see a really solid support, Jimmy Wu, basically. Hmm. Uncommon. I want to. I want to try and come up with something for Killmonger that's more than just like the, the traitor kind of mechanic. But well, theoretically, he should be like a really good, like mechanic. Like he should have like support for like robots and vehicle. Right. He should have like, right. Like based on his episode, that's what he should get. But I I hope he's not just like a generic one of those drones. Guy. Guy. Like a bystander. That'd be cool. Um, somehow, like if he KOs well, we figures, not. he gets like a plus one stat to something because he kind of like every time in the episode, every time he makes like one of his moves kind of thing, he does like bump himself up to like, not really like get stronger, but it does like give him better tech, better, you know, whatever. Um, so yeah, that would also make sense. Um, but I, I, I would assume, yeah, it's like a, when he's KO'd, join your opponent's force. Yeah, here's what I, I'll time. say. I don't hope for Killmonger. 75 points, charge blades, uh, six range, one lightning bolt. Because I, I feel like there's, there's, he's a strong contender for that very basic close combat that can shoot in the right situation, but just doesn't. Uh, next up, we got Uncommons. Obviously, this goes to Mast Baron Zemo. Lots of fun stuff in the Uncommon area. I don't know what are you what are you looking at oh, man start with, uh, so Black Widow. i'll say the the four hardest to figure out what they're gonna do would be mobius and mobius ravona renslayer uh costume vision and costume wanda those will probably be the hardest for me to like pin down so mobius is more of a like council type character which is hard yeah. to translate to like hero clicks Obviously, he does have some ability. Um, we could get him when he's got, like, Loki in the control collar kind of thing. Um, mm. So, like, something like Prob, where he's kind of, like, his rewind time. Be, uh, the control collar. I could honestly see them taking each member of the TVA and letting them specifically do one thing over the other. Like, maybe maybe it's Ravona who does the whole staff pruning thing maybe he does the collar thing and then maybe hunter b15 does the uh the slow-mo thing sure you know instead of you know i'm just yeah I'm instead just of like on. trying to combine them all into one yeah. yeah um all of them should probably be able to pop out miss minutes as like a figure somehow like maybe i would like it if some that's way fitted. um call and help from the tva would be a cool shared Ooh, trait yeah uh get like someone else with the keyword in i mean there's only four i guess that would make sense to have it but uh maybe i mean technically the loki with uh like the trousers and jacket that with is the variant TVA Loki. Yeah, TVA loki. yeah yeah um that is when he's like helping him out or whatever um sort of what would be like so prob would also make a lot of sense they've got like a lot of time shenanigans yeah that's my guess for those two what do you think Vision and Wanda in costume could possibly do? So they they have to have like traded shape change for sure. You know, and what was it? During this episode, Vision was like his most like curious, I feel like, in this episode, trying to get answers. He like found out the most. He saw that like certain parts of the town were okay. like dead. Um right. Wanda's so, got like some sort of mind control kind of thing going on. It's tough. 
obviously i think they're all gonna have some type of like halloween traits that i think maybe pietro tommy the witch agnes they might all have like the the halloween trait i think it'd be kind of cool if they had like a trick-or-treating trait where it's actually just grand entrance where they for the first time they can just move for free if it's the first turn and they're in the starting area i think that'd be kind of cool where it's like going trick-or-treating you yeah. know they that free move i think that'd be really neat want or um, tommy and billy both have like uh mission points that are based on collecting candy tokens that would be really funny <laughs> that would be really really funny if... they really don't do a whole lot and well yeah. not in this episode but i mean no no obviously but they, these are the two powers in this episode and we we see them use their powers to a very small degree right uh Wanda and Vi- I, so like Vision's like a luchador, right? Or that's what he's supposed. He's like a wrestler. He's supposed to be not a luchador. Um, yeah, I guess yeah, sort yeah. of, right? He's supposed to be like a Mexican wrestler or something. And then Wanda is a fortune, uh, <laughs> Sokovian fortune teller. So right. I would like damage <laughs> powers or speed powers based on that. Obviously, the fortune teller thing would just be like perplex and prob. Or I would really like it if it was yes. Uh, a number one through six whenever she's targeted by an attack if that number appears in the attack roll the attack misses or odds are even either one you know like i think that'd be really cool um for wanda and then for like vision he he just so doesn't do any like grappling though like he he is still just like vision he's just sort of flying around seeing stuff but i would still like a uh a plasticity charge like just as being like i'm a I'm a wrestler or whatever, you know, like, like that would be maybe some neat. reversal or nimble some oh, slingshot. Yeah, absolutely. Give us a, a new PAC just, to... <laughs> just yeah. for vision, please. And thank you. Uh, yeah, that's kind of like what I think. I think the scariest uncommon is Dr. Strange Supreme. Yes. Or being mid tier to bad. So uh, for what he does, for how important he is, here's, I think it's really scary that he's an Here's what I would like to... I'll say what I, I would like to see for him, and then I'll say what I think I'll probably see. Um, so if you have not seen that episode, uh, I think a Doctor Strange Supreme that when he KOs an opposing character, he can take a power from them or like get a stat boost or possibly both. So I'm assuming he's costed like let's say 125 and he's got Ooh. solid stats and can do this. So he's similar to like Mazaz or like Regent or the other characters that we've seen that do this kind of thing. Um, but some like a Dr. Strange Supreme that can like heal and also uh, steal powers and like stats from other characters that he KOs, I think would be the most accurate. I guess also something to do with like, I don't know, some like enhanced version of defend, like a defend that not only shares uh, his defense, but also like some sort of defense power or like reduces the amount of damage that a friendly character can take somehow. That would be that would be nice. Or maybe it's a um, at the beginning of the game, uh, sort of like a, a Deadpool with goodie bags. You give everybody on your team a okay. mystical shield spell token or something and the first time they would be damaged by an attack you remove it and instead they aren't yeah I as long feel. as he's not costed too low that sounds like it would work yeah i think if he was like 80 100 <laughs> like like you said 125 i think that'd be solid he gives everybody a mystical like shield token or whatever yeah. protection spell right and i think that'd be fine or like that much of your your build at least 130 your build you know at least 100 points i think that's like fine yeah um which can get out of hand when you have maybe a bunch of small point characters sure. but i think if he is that much i think that's okay um that would be really cool actually no but the problem with him is common zone commons typically aren't overly complicated no but he is a complicated but he is a complicated character that's yeah. wherein lies the problem that's why you know my so you remember singularity from what was it ai yes captain america oh captain america yep i'm imagining my worst fear is that he gets the exact dial that singularity has oh some phasing um, pen blast and yeah previous. so singularity yeah. Ha- for 100 points has power cosmic six range one lightning bolt flight phasing teleport top dial psychic blast top dial impervious prob it's an 11 for four i mean not like this is the worst character in the world but it's just kind of disappointing. And then uh, moves on to running shot, pulse wave with defend for the rest of the dial, and shape change. Oof. 
Yeah, and I can see with that. hypersonic steel energy. I could see this exact dial fitting him mm -hmm. as far mm -hmm. as what WizKids thinks. Um, man, how disappointed I would be if that was the what actually ends up happening. Do not give me a 100-point Doctor Strange Supreme that has phasing top dial. Not unless he, like, really knocks it out of the park everywhere yeah. else. Like, Yeah. Um, let's just keep going through everything. We might as well. Uh, but with this in mind, as we move into higher uh, things, do you think the Disney Plus set, will there be someone that will buff Pogs? If so, which character would you do? Uh, would do it, and what power or start would they get? So, like, what stat buff or what power would Pogs get? Uh, let's just keep that question in mind. I don't know if anyone necessarily in the rares would do that, but let's sort of keep that in mind as, like, moving forward. Um, because I didn't think anyone in the commons or uncommons would necessarily. I was going to say, what do you, do you think post apocalyptic Black Widow will have like some sort of boost against robots? Or do you think she'll do robots. something like Arnim Zola ish? Like upload uh, virus kind of thing? That'd be really cool. I don't know I, how that would work, but. I don't know how it would work either. Maybe, I think she could potentially, yeah, going back to her. Like if she occupies your opponent's starting area, give her a double power action or a power action or something, and then like for the rest of the game, maybe like double power action for the rest of the game, opposing characters uh, lose autonomous and have uh, attack values or something like minus one, like yeah. wild. Like that'd be kind of neat, or like defense value minus there's, one. There's so much potential. Like it's hard because there's, there's a, just a ton of potential that the set could have. And we won't know until we start seeing some of the figures how disappointed we are. Um, no, I, was, I know it's going to be a be little positive. disappointed. It, it uh, is going to be just, a little disappointing just for how much hype. But So we're we'll talking see. about something that specifically has wording that would benefit bystanders. Benefit a bystander. Not just some like something that could benefit everyone on your team. Yes. Um, so honestly, with this it makes me think of higher rarity stuff. So I don't have anything so far. I'm just saying, let's keep that in mind as we like go forward. I don't okay. have anything in mind with like rares. Yeah. I'm not seeing uh, anything man, in the rares. A rare that I really like, he needs to be good to, for me is like, this is like make or break it for me is like John Walker. And then us agent, of course, like that's, right. that's like, that's my favorite part that they added seeing a character from comics. Who's not, a big character in comics seeing him represented in the mcu is like meant a lot for me um so i really need a like john walker where it's like we get a a stereotypical like just a normal like soldier dude doing his best like he he showed up he helped sam and bucky out of course please like we already know that only red wing is pretty much probably the only bystander in the set otherwise it wouldn't make sense if they had other ones but didn't print them um so if for some reason he made a Lamar Hoskins pog, I would be like livid. I, I would be really upset. <laughs> I'd be at least happy he exists. Yeah. But then I'd be like, wow, but we then, got yeah. robbed of a good. We're probably star. already never getting like, one. We're we're already not going to get yeah. one. Um, not I would this. I would have loved it if he was like a con exclusive. Honestly, I'd been okay with that. Um, but anyways, like John, he needs to be like he has to have something where like choose a sidekick or choose a partner person at the beginning of the turn and then or at the beginning of the game like how harley quinn has like choose a pudding type of oh, deal like yeah, yeah. He, he like chooses someone to be his sidekick his partner uh, or like or talia something. from batman animated sure oh and yeah you're yeah. thinking he like switches dial uh he... i think i think when that character is ko'd he gains like uh flurry battle fury okay or like this like some some no nonsense or or he gets placed in that character's square, or he gets to like move as a free action next turn, uh, or he gets free make an attack, but only against the character that KO'd that person, yeah. something like that. Yeah, I was like, gonna, I yeah would, he, I really, you could tie that into like some sort of retaliation thing, thing too. When a oh, friendly man. character, if, he, if US Agent the Prime, if the Prime US Agent is purely unhinged John Walker, which he's not really unhinged when he is in like the final battle scene of that. He's actually really more of a, a redemption arc version of him. But if they if they translated that to just being unhinged John Walker, and I know technically he's still in the cap costume at that point, um, and I'm going to talk about this a lot, and I'm, I apologize for already probably talking about it too much. Um, he's already in the cap costume at that point, but I could see WizKids being like, okay, but we're going to use this episode to show him as US agent. If that was like pure like retaliation, like if he gets like a 25-point line, prime and he is like a 
a pure retaliation like version of John Walker. That would be really, really awesome. I would really, really like that being a, you know, because they've done retail like that before. Uh, I would love that, uh, you know, maybe even if we like make it a little tough where it's like friendly characters that get attacked or targeted with an attack with the soldier keyword, that would be kind of neat. I would also really like it if, if this U.S. agent could work with uh, Bucky and Sam because they, they have a little bit of like working together in that final episode. So I, I would really appreciate something like that. But we'll, I don't know, as far as specific abilities for what that would do, I have, I have like zero clue. But um, I'm all for it. You know, I, I think some retaliation, some type of ability like that for John Walker is like perfect. Uh, yeah, I, I honestly, I could even see a, uh, a bit of an activation click for him. I would hate it if they did because there's no good way to get rid of activation clicks anymore unless it's like a free deal and one damage. But I could almost like see that where it's like a good morning America, you know, type because that's what we see him be for the most like the first kind of bits of when we see him is like just, oh, here's, you know, cap is back. Uh, he's on Good Morning America. He's like doing a press tour. He's like signing action figures. That could be kind of funny. And then like, it's like, okay, it's go time down to business. Deal him the damage. And then he's like charge, whatever. He he throws the shield, but he's not, he's not, he more than a punchy guy. He's a punchy guy. I would like to see, you know, he actually has a gun too. So maybe something like that. I don't know. We'll see. That's, that's all I know. I feel like, for me, that's huge, and I've talked about it for like five minutes now, so <laughs> that's fine. I'm I'm gonna let it go. Um, so we've got a bunch of stuff in like the rares. Um, I really quickly, the rares might be my favorite section. It's pretty honestly. solid. It's got some it's pretty solid stuff. It's good. Um, power broker. I think mm-hmm. so because she plays such a small role. I'm trying to think like whiz kids. What would someone like a power broker do? Well, they're like part of the black market. They can they can provide you with things and get things and they have, you know, control over that kind of supply. So also something I forgot to say about Hunter B15. One of the first things she does is take the Tesseract from Loki. So also like hitting a character and unequipping them would also make Ooh. sense. Uh, but to go you along know, with that, if the power that broker something that should be played up more in a set with equipment. So it's yeah. like, go ahead. That makes sense. That's why, yeah, because the set has equipments, I'm assuming there's going to be um, quite a few like traits and things that go along with like stuff that has to do with equipment. So I think if the power broker can either start with multiple like random equipments from this set, um, <clears throat> or if she can just like bring equipment in from like a sideline similar to like E-Tree or... Uh, the old maestro or like something like that where she can you know yes. either has an optional yeah. trait to start with something or or multiple things or um, mm. she just has like a you know special objects under 10 points can be part of her collection or her like network or whatever you want to call it um, also skipping ahead the collector will probably have something similar he's got to yeah but i think the power broker i can't really think of something that she would do other than that and if it's just the super soldier serum that also makes sense but i really don't understand so there was conversation and this is an aside thing there was conversation about the super soldier serum and people were like oh like plus one stats battle fury and then there was people saying like no cap isn't like angry it's not battle yeah, fury you know it's just plus one stat and it's like this isn't cap super soldier serum this also is like true. tainted bad super soldier serum that right. i mean what was it the flag smashers we obviously don't see the flag smashers go like complete nutso and like rage out but at the same time it's like not it's not like the perfected formula it's just right. an, an effective formula <laughs> It's, I would say, less effective because it doesn't make you big and jacked. You still have to be uh, a sad whatever person you are, but instead right. you just get all the benefits. The, the guy in the show is like, you get all the benefits without all that bulky muscle. And I'm like, uh, sounds like a benefit to me, but okay, live your truth. Um, yeah, yeah, it also makes no, like, that's not how, like, what, does it just, like, increase the muscle density it's. I think it's Without like ants. The size. You know how like ants are like they can lift five thousand times their body weight, or like uh, they're like small. I think maybe it's. So this it's is like all pure speculation. Serum. But it's like yeah, it's like Spider Man serum, serum, where you're like you're still like sort of a dude, but you know, stronger with what you got. 
you know? Um, I still think, yeah, Super Soldier Serum, I feel like, should just be, like, plus one stats or willpower. Because, like, you know, Captain America can, you know, do, I can do this all day. He can keep going. Like, I feel like willpower would make sense, getting Super Soldier Serum like that. Yeah. Um, Super Soldier Serum or, like, double perplex. You can use perplex to target oh, yourself yeah, yeah. twice. Like, I think that would also make sense for Super Soldier Serum. Yeah. So, um, trying to, like, make think of things that aren't just, like, power gem because... <laughs> Right, close it essentially expert, could just do strength or something. Plus, close yeah. combat, ranged combat experts. Um, yeah, uh, but that's yeah. So power broker, I think, should be able to sideline options. But I understand if she doesn't. Um, I just I think this is going to be one of the weaker primes in the set. Probably the weakest prime for me. What do you think Heist Nebula could do? So. Another traitor mechanic kind of thing. This is the rough one. Was she a traitor though? I mean, she was like not really a traitor because it's a triple. She was like a triple. She was yeah, it was a triple cross, right? Uh, I I don't know. I think it'd be cool where it's like a once per game. She can lose all of her keywords, and then something happened. I don't like. I really don't know. Um, I I guess that that was like the thing she did. Was she? I think she might get a a generic like what we see for like uh, Black Panther and. A storm or like a uh, ice and guy gardener, like those type figures, where it's like one adjacent to the to oh, T'Challa, T'Challa Star Lord sure. modify defense plus one or something like that. You know, I think I don't know if it's Nebula's ship, but she just might be like a taxi or something. Like okay. I don't want to. Yeah, she just seems like she's, of any she is rare. The only other Ravager be, we get right. Is that what they're called? Be, Ravagers. I think they are the Ravagers. Yeah, they're the Ravagers because they're all wearing red. Captain Genocide's got red on. So, yeah, they are all Ravagers. She's the only other Ravager that we get besides another T'Challa. It yeah. Would make, I mean, yeah. I can um, see something just, like, very simple for her. I don't know because, like, I also don't know what I expect yeah, or, like, what I would, from, I mean, like, I would Marilyn Monroe stealth, hair nebula. Yeah. Because they're going yeah. specifically with the heist. Um, stealth, again, something where if, like, she hits or maybe as a free action – if she's adjacent you know, to someone, something that equi- unequips somebody, um, that would make sense. You know, stealing yeah. something from somebody. So, really quickly, it's like thinking about her and and her mechanic is sort of like she counters. Speaking out here, the the collector, like technically, right? Like she's like right. for him, and then but really against him. What if? <laughs> what if? Uh, she had a power where she's like 50, 60 points. But all actions, like all power actions to equip something are double power actions. Instead. Mm. What if she's like, you know, um, what is the it called? Sheriff, Sheriff Strange, Sheriff Strange of, equipment. of equipment. That right? would that would be pretty good. How gnarly would that? Would That would probably make her one of the best, the, one of the best figures, if not the best figure in the set. Having an ability like that would be gnarly. That would definitely be something that could like shift up current play oh yeah um like, you gotta think id cards back then but equipment is the thing now yeah majority of teams i don't think have there's some any equipment. competitive team that plays without equipment usually um, right there's probably a few that sneak in there but yeah the vast but, majority yeah. it's easy to toss on like 10 point that, power gem whatever that would be gnarly like you want to talk about changing the flow of the game yeah that right there do you That's want to crazy. equip that and or do you, do you want to equip that and then have to clear next turn or mm-hmm. yeah or it's like, right, equipping it's, it's, and it's yeah, pretty much yeah have like ten points of uselessness like that yeah no I and other characters could get that ability but we're just thinking about her and I'm like what would make her a fun unique you know character that would be really gnarly yeah and it's something um, it's something yeah. that they have done before in like a different capacity so I could definitely see them revisiting that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's that a good be, rare discussion. That would be pretty solid. Um, right. The old man Loki, uh, I'd like to see something that like aggro's attacks to him. Um, okay, or yeah. potentially like handing out, not really handing out shape change because he doesn't really do that, but definitely something that can force the opponent to like not attack whoever because uh, that's pretty much his like big thing is that he does. Um, to go along with that, I mean, just generic illusions kind of stuff. So probably going to have like a mind control, sadly mm. in cap, like stuff like that. Yeah. But something like a yeah. smoke cloud, 
and if an opposing character is in one of his smoke cloud squares, uh, they can only attack him or something like that. I don't know. I, I yeah, I can't really think for of that, but I think there's enough interesting stuff they could do with him. Sylvie, I think, sadly, is pretty much just like a charge blades piece, and then maybe some sort of like mind control or in kind trade. of thing. Yeah. But yeah. Um, give her uh, give her mind control as, th- as free, like yeah. minus one attack or something. Like she um, or, or like she can only like use it when diamond she's patch. If he's got to like touch the person, right? So like, yeah. she can use mind control as free, but only as close. Yeah, you know, mind control is free only if she like hit a character this turn or something. That too. Yeah, I'd be fine. Yeah. Okay with all that. Super rares, super rares. I I still I. I know I said rares might be my favorite, but I think it is between rares and super rares because there's so much good stuff in the super rares. There's some uh, yeah, real solid genuinely, stuff. Genuinely, I do not know what these Captain Carters are going to do that's different. All three of them, I have no idea. Right. Um, it's so <laughs> it's so weird. Um, Hydra Stomper, though, I think we're getting a Elseworlds Green Lantern style, not, not the carry one, but the one that has power battery tokens. Okay. And once he's out of those, he can't use those powers or make attacks anymore. I think it's that, but then he has an ability to like recharge them because sort of what happens is, well, I mean, you watched it. He like runs out of power like right. halfway through, yeah, like, you know, to, yeah, like, like near the end generating or generator power because he so, doesn't have access. To I think he should be like really big, bulky. Uh, I would out really the like it. Yeah. And then you have to have skinny Steve go collect it. Yeah, you have to have skinny Steve has to go pick it up. Uh, so I would like that. I would honestly be okay if Hydra Stomper was like a vehicle and you needed skinny Steve to pilot yeah. him. That would be it really gets neat. bonuses based off of Skinny Steve being the pilot, yeah. or or if you can put like Skinny Steve on your sideline, and if he's or like pay five points if you if Skinny Steve is on there, he gets plus I don't know plus one stats, but or maybe just uh something like, some um, way of some kind of pilot ish ability because like they're not Nick doing Fury anymore. Hulkbuster so Iron Man when it like breaks, yeah, it spits exactly out like that. Iron Man, yeah, Iron Man, like that would be cool. Uh, I would also, I honestly could see a secondary that also that Elseworlds Green Lantern, where if he carries Captain Carter or oh, maybe yeah, someone yeah. he shares a keyword with, you know, because he's carrying her around and then she normally gets dropped off. So, like, what if he could, if he can carry someone else, then it can do an action after he carries them. That'd be cool. I think that would make sense. Captain Carter, he's your, he, sh- he needs to work in tandem with Captain Carter. They need to be some of the highest synergy in the set. Should be Captain Carter and the Hydra Stomper. Yeah, um, should be either either pair of them. They should. Yeah, that is in, one of like the theory. The that's biggest like the team biggest ups. duo. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's other them, than Wandavision and Wanda Falcon, and Vision, Bucky, and Falcon, and Bucky. But I think more so them because they they're constantly fighting together. Falcon and, and Winter Soldier, they fight sometimes together, but they're kind of off doing their own like things a lot of the time. Right, and it's not. It was no. It was like not Captain like back to back fighting Soldier. usually. Right, they um, only do that against John. I yeah. think that's it, right? Like John's really. the only one they really team up against, and I guess like the Dora Milaje, but they mostly just lose that fight yeah, handily. So that sucked. It, it was it was like two like veterans uh, versus like Dora Milaje who are still like training. You know, two like retired veterans uh, who typically fight fodder. You know, like let's let's be real. Yeah, they weren't main Avengers. John and Bucky just fought the fodder characters. They just shot the Chitari in the Outriders. They weren't. <laughs> yeah. They weren't punching Thanos. Let's be real. You know. Um, yeah, they didn't. They didn't have a chance against the Dormilaji. It was um, very sad. So the the only difference between the two Captain Carters is one is actively fighting in World War II, and then one comes to like modern day, right? Forget probably. So that's we've probably got the true. the one that's recruited by the Watcher, and then we've got the world war two one. So one hopefully has like some Hydra stomper stuff that she works with. And then maybe like the prime is, uh, the chosen one or whatever you want to say. Uh, cause that's really the only difference. Otherwise she's like, it's not like she changes throughout the thing. Right. Like once yeah, she's got shield a, in hand, she's, she needs a good, uh, lead by example type power. Um, that's like she needs to go punch first type of deal, I think, would be good for the modern day one. Um, gosh, I wish it was the stealth suit. I really wish it was painted to look like the stealth suit. That's that's what bothers me the most about the set list. Yeah. It might be. These are just digital renders, but still, 
you know, when we know she has a different look, it would be nice to get that, but eh, here we are. As far as what her shield does, man, I don't know. Like, all these, like, it's three shields. Yeah. You know? It's hard um, to, because I, I think hers, I will say, you know, just based off of, um, off of, like, the shows. Like it, it has uh, to just go off of how Falcon people slash... typically use the shield. Yeah. Use it, like, how they use it. You so, know? and yeah. Captain Carter's gave, like, charge. That would make sense. Charge? Wild. Yeah. Maybe like so I think hers hers is more close yeah. combat. Whereas the one that what do you uh, think about... Bucky and Falcon is more range. So well, Bucky and Falcons. John John and Falcons. Let's be real. Let's be real. <laughs> sure. Captain America Shield, not Bucky and Falcons. Well the, John they Falcons. both you like throw it back and forth kind of ah, they like do like the bouncy back uh, thing. I I would say yeah, Captain America Shield is supposed to be that crazy geometry throwing it in the air so like let's do like simple shield stuff they both give toughness or an invuln depending on how crazy we want it to be but i think both toughness and then captain carter's is combat reflexes close combat expert captain america's is esd inch combat expert just in the very simplest okay. boiling it down to like yeah. she uses it to punch more and they use it to throw more and maybe two targets for captain america's shield we like are that. missing then... a shield from this set though I might have to get two of Captain America's to repaint it because post-apocalyptic Black Widow should have. Oh, it's true. It's true. What was it? Uh, not Captain Russia. Uh, whatever his yeah, name yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, Red Guardian Shield. Red Guardian Shield. Yeah. The most used Red Guardian Shield ever got because Lord knows he didn't use it at all. He used it once in the <laughs> Black Widow movie, which is sad. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. His whole character was so sad. Anyways, I'm not going to get off on that. Uh, and then U.S. Agent Shield, I think, should should very much be a like if the rest were to give, uh, combat reflexes, ESD, or like invulnerability, his should definitely like just give toughness, and then I think should break down over time, depending on how much Wiz Kids knew about that when they were designing the set. His shield should theoretically like break down over time, or maybe be one of those things where it's like he can block a certain number of hits, and then after that, it gets unequipped from him or something like that. What if it was? Um, because like even in comics, character like with this shield equipped has like four, four shield tokens. Okay, uh, when he's like hit, it's like so when he has four shield tokens. And this is like overcomplicated to all heck. Right. But uh, when, when he, he has four shield tokens, he can use impervious. When he has three, he can use invincible. When he has two, he can use invuln. When he has one, he can use toughness. And then once they're all removed, when he's out, remove them. Yeah, remove from the game. You destroy this object. I'd be okay with that. Uh, KO this object or whatever. Yeah. Um, I could see it because so like that's how John Walker's shield, his homemade shield, works in the final episode, and it's also how if you read the absolutely awful U.S. Agent series, it's not awful because U.S. Agent's an awful character. U.S. Agent's an awesome character. Whoever wrote this series wrote a convoluted, trash, garbage can of a series that was the U.S. Agent series last year. Is so bad, but he has like five, ten shields in that series where they're like they're like government issue shields. And he's not even really working for the government anymore or like something weird like that. So like all his shields constantly get trashed throughout the book, which is, makes it interesting. I just wish it was a better book. So like that kind of thing, like how his shield acts in the show and how his shield is in comics most recently, at least in that series, uh, it would make sense if they just like just kept getting trashed or like slowly get trashed or something. I think that'd be cool. Um, but that's definitely the vibe for like U.S. agents shield. Like that's what it that's like what it does versus how or how he uses it anyways so that is how the shields like should probably be different and i think they're they all are going to be noticeably different um since there's only yeah. three of them it's easier. i would hope yeah. so yeah. so give uh whiz kids some practice for the 20 swords that we're oh, gonna gosh. get gosh goodness gracious. Um, so um, what i'm gonna skip agnes though? because if okay. she's not doing like an activation thing i don't really know what she's doing uh, yeah. Some like mind control, some behind the scenes kind of stuff, yada yada. Um, the visions, so vision and the vision. Um, mm. I have no idea how this duo is going to work. Obviously, they do fight. There is like some physical like stuff, but on paper, they are the exact same. Uh, at least as far as like abilities and yeah. stuff. They so got same dude syndrome. We'll have to slip like some ship of Theseus kind of thing in there. Yeah. Because, like, I I do not know how 
exactly the dials will go. It would be kind of neat if, I don't know, I wouldn't say like play the two together, but really like the Vision, his only interaction with any of these characters is with the Vision for the most part. Yeah. Like that's where the, his only dialogue comes in. They, uh, they so... bring back arch enemies for these. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll call him, I'll call it white vision, blank vision, uh, blank vision. the prime Jordan one. Vision. His whole thing is like, you know, well, his whole thing like that makes us, like gives us hope or whatever is um, the Wanda vision, vision, <laughs> gosh, the non prime <laughs> will like be able to potentially unlock uh, hidden memories inside of the prime vision. But you shouldn't have to play both of them, so it's weird. It's like maybe he'll have a stop click, like he'll be uh, some sort of like hypersonic whatever piece, and then a stop click with like two clicks after, where he gets like his memories back. And I don't yeah. know because we don't really I see think, him after um, he just flies away. I think he uh, it has to work in tandem with Tyler Hayward. Like Tyler is going to be like a, a kid okay. Loki of War of the Realms, and then this Vision is just going to be his destroyer. Okay, like, yeah, I think yeah. that would make the most sense for like an interaction. I don't know what that, also that would is look like. Probably the only usefulness Tyler Hayward could. Have. Tyler's going to right. Like I don't know what that dude's going to yeah. do besides that. You know. Um. So yeah, plasticity and barrier. I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> leadership so, maybe. Yeah, leadership. It's kind of what a loser. Uh, he's got a power <laughs> a where it's like, oh, uh, you can't shoot kids, and it's like, sure, I can. Just aim lower. Like maybe that's his power or something. I don't know. <laughs> like, anyways, <laughs> he was all about killing Billy and Tom. Any, anyway, um, so uh, that's it for like super rares. I, I really do think this Falcon's gonna be good. I maybe I really have huge hopes like, for the Watcher. Oh, that the super rare Falcon. Yeah, yeah, he's gotta be. Well, I, I want to say the super rare is a better Falcon, sculpt like, in the chase. That's what this Falcon is. And I, I'm going to give big negatives to the people that were in charge of Falcon or soldier by making Falcon get his wings trashed in the first episode. Like hate you guys for that. And then he has to be normal dude. The entire, almost the entire show. Uh, you mean like I uh, get his wings trash like third episode in or something, but then he doesn't get them back to like the, the, the end human episode. series so, where Medusa yeah. gets like a buzz cut episode one, right? Ugh, and they're like, yeah, "That's her bad. whole thing. That's that what is does. what she does. Like, hair is her thing." You know? Um, like, no, they have to go on a journey without their special stuff. Like, okay, go fix us. Know who these characters are first? Oh, geez. Uh, so yeah, uh, I think Watcher like he's got to have some type of stop click or removing tokens or something to where it's like, okay, time to get involved. And right like, when he like a breaks countdown his own. thing. Yeah, something like that. Do you think um, there'll be uh, any kind of like swap mechanic with the Watcher where he like builds a team, mm, or maybe, maybe where he just like lets? Or it's either going to be keyword cheat or like some sort of swap, or like we could see like recruiter. I could see recruiter. I could imagine if they keep going with recruiter, Watcher definitely having it. Anything with President Loki. Yeah, I could see Those them both, both have recruiter. Be- if, if President Loki can uh, recruit people with the politician keyword. Um, oh, that would be funny. Huge, that would be funny. The huge pool of politician of keyword politician characters, characters yeah. that we get. Yeah. No, the, well, right now. and the Watcher holds his own. Like, he's definitely got some offensive capability. Again, See, we don't know the what only thing, point though, WizKids is saw. That... Or what? How like, much information that's like they had? Second to last episode, he goes full out, and then obviously this isn't armored up Watcher, you know. No. So it's not. But we know he he still has that capability, even if he's not in his cool Watcher armor. So I hope he. It's kind of like normal Watcher, right? Like they know what the Watcher does. So even if they're just basing this off of like comic book Watcher, if you make him relatively better than the one we got in F four, whose stats beef up as time goes on, like as he takes damage, then that's like fine. You know, that'll still technically act about how this watcher acts. You know, yeah. I'd be okay with that. I don't know, dude. Politician keyword. You're bringing in Super Rare Wonder Woman. Bringing in okay. Lex Luthor. You're bringing in Max okay. Holbord. <laughs> Press um, Ricard. Sure. <laughs> Press Ricard. You're bringing Kane. in 1776. No, you're bringing in A. You're bringing in Apocalypse with the weird alien speak. You're bringing in uh, Susan, Queen of Atlantis. Uh, Human Torch from Fantastic Four. Uh, Storyline OP. Wow, we didn't get any politicians in Empire or War of the Realms. <laughs> How curious. 
You're yeah. bringing in Triple H. <laughs> yeah, Triple H. You can forget, dude. Kane, Triple yeah. H. You're good. Yeah, dude. Politician recruiter, make it Bring happen. Bring Kane in to do some um, fiery posts. Cases in the middle of the game. Here's here's what I'm thinking. Chases collector needs to be an aggro collector. Hit characters, unequip their equipment. He automatically equips it. He yeah. can use the effects, and he can equip as many pieces of equipment as he wants. Maybe he can cycle through them, like at the beginning of the turn, like how Earth X Cap can do. Sure. Um, choose one to use this turn or whatever. But I think he is a if he hits, he equips. No, no roll on a D six to potentially equip. He is he takes it from you. This is aggro anabolic steroid collector. He is just taking whatever he wants. Also, he's, he's yoked. Something he that like, puts somebody in like a penalty box kind of thing. Oh sure, yeah. Like I don't, I don't know how mobile. you would do that, but. I mean, similar to what was it? The box inside a thousand boxes, red sun, green lantern, where it's like yeah. you can bury her around someone kind of thing, something like that. But you got to make it good. It can't be, it can't be like a garbage double power action kind of thing or something. Yeah. But yeah, definitely cycles through equipment. Definitely, um, if not the ability to equip, like the ABPI collector. Uh, at least the ability to start with like a certain number of equipment under certain points like even if you have to pay for them he just gets to like start the game with them that would be that'd be cool i don't know um, he might he could also do like title points we we'll see uh, but that's my biggest hope is like that collector does something really cool worth getting so not be a waste of a chase dark hold scarlet witch i think should definitely be able to take away special powers potentially take away like safeguard outwit like her whole thing when she's like so in this like specific version when she's fighting that specific agatha harkness um she's like shooting the hexes into like the the bubble that is whatever that town west view or whatever um and she puts like the runes up that like strip agatha of like her power inside of there her magic or whatever so Definitely something that can do that. That's pretty much like her big, like tricked you kind of moment. Other than that, I I would probably just say like psychic blast. Maybe I mean she's not really like mind controlly at this point. She's like very angry. I don't know. I'd also say for Chase Loki, yeah, we would have him. Uh, so he's got like a guest at the party trait where if he stands still for five minutes of screen time we put him in a set oh wait no that's what happened uh well, dang i yeah i yeah, do Loki's not know. such a bad chase i such a I think bad he's pick. gonna be a, um something i think they're gonna give him super generic charge giant reach quake when he hits give him action tokens yeah like just like very ice, ice giant because this yeah. isn't even trickster loki this is no. legitimately just an ice giant that we do not see do anything special on screen. Maybe so Wiz Kids like pretty didn't see his episodes. So they don't know if he can change size or not because he's like clearly a standard size character. So maybe they might give him an ability to yeah. like get bigger, you know, become giant size. Or if they if they only saw like the give character Nuck like, Chuck tokens, something like that. Yeah, if we know. if they only saw the like the character's like screen grab or something or like an image of him, and they do give him like Didn't shape change, mind control, people. it's going to be the. The oh, funniest yeah. mix-up since, like, title Deadpool with the terrible keywords. Oh, right. Yeah, that's rough. Um, Yeah, we already said Collector, Gamora, probably. So here's my thing. Gamora's probably going to be a generic charge blades piece kind of thing. But yes. um, maybe a bystander that, either a bystander or some sort of trait that um, shows that little robot dog thing that destroys equipment i'm sorry what the like the what? gem destroyer oh that's right what's called a dog it's like well a... it, it's got like weird robot legs i don't know yeah like that's right it's more I, like I a totally spider, forgot. I the gem grinder gem yeah grinder. destroy equipment or whatever right yeah okay yeah I, I keep forgetting i forgot about that thing the whole like point is like to destroy all the gems slowly i could see um i'm guessing being a mission that point thing somehow is... And then, yeah. like, you get five mission points if you destroy a piece of equipment. Like, make it a high number of mission points, but obviously it's difficult to try to win. Like, she's not going to win off of that because you only ever have right. three pieces of equipment. Like, if it's opposing equipment, you know what I mean? So, like, yeah. Like, it would be difficult, 
But if you compare her with other mission points, it's just like a nice way to get supplemental points. That would be really cool. Where it's like if she destroys something, you get mission points for it. Like, because that right. was like their goal. That was their alternate win condition. They didn't have to beat Ultron. They just had to destroy all the all the stones. You yeah. know? I'm guessing the episode that we Ultron. didn't see yet, where it's her and Sakari and Iron Man, that thing probably plays like a pivotal role in that episode as well. Yeah. So it'll be interesting if we get some sort of spoiler. We probably will get some sort of spoiler with the Iron Man. Yeah, probably. But even then, how much did WizKids know when they made this? Like, how much did the other toy companies know when they like made this thing and then it never came out? Did they watch the episode? Did they get? They probably just got like a synopsis of like roughly what this character does or something, you know? And it was probably something lame. Like Tony Stark is instead stranded on Sakaar and he has to use his wits to build a a suit out of junk and must survive in the gladiator. Like something like super bland and generic, you know. <laughs> Like, something almost as bad as, like, this troubled teen follows the ideology of a madman. You know, like, something where it's like you got nothing to go off of. You know? Like, not really. Um, That's the punchline. Oh, god! Quite literally. That was That's so good. That was The so character, good the punch... Wow. Um, so, speak, going back to Matt's <laughs> thing about buffing bystanders, that's what I think Ultron Infinity will do. I think he's going to buff characters okay. with Ultron in their name. But he's not going to generate any himself because obviously there aren't any in this set. So I think he's going to like, what if like a turn he could like power action, double power action, modify characters with Ultron in their name, like by plus two stats or something. I don't mm. think he would do that. That'd be or maybe solid, he has like though. an optional trait where he's got like a plus 30 trait where it's like characters with Ultron in their name, modify attack and defense plus one. That he would be should. Wild. He should be able to like double power action generate like a handful of drones. Not necessarily like the best drones that we've seen, yeah. but he definitely there's makes just no drones. There's just no drones and there's just no drones in this set. You know, there's well, no not that we tokens. know of. Yeah, it's possible that there's just. I feel none, like it's safe but... to assume there's none, but like we already saw Spider Man, uh, potentially, and this could be a thing. Which I don't know if we said this back then, but. Maybe they just can't use any artwork from What If or from the shows, which is why... Well, I mean, they're clearly using artwork. I don't know. But maybe for some reason they can't use those... Like screen caps pictures. or something. For whatever reason, which is why yeah. Red Wing is just the picture of the equipment itself. Right. So maybe there are bystanders, but they're just... They don't really exist fully. They're like yet. that they weird really know. MS Paint bystander that, right, that Spider-Man Spider -Man has. has. Yeah, exactly. Minimalist. So maybe it's stuff like that. Yeah, we'll have to see. Um, I would also say, uh, not someone that buffs bystanders, but like somebody that could, as like some sort of action or some sort of like retaliation, whatever kind of thing, someone that could like either destroy or like remove from the map a bystander would make sense for the collector to be able to do that. Because like he yeah. also collects living things, so he if does. You just collect bystanders. That would also be kind of fun. Ooh, what if he could like. Whenever he, you know, attacks someone that has a bystander printed on their card, then they can no longer generate, or like any character that could generate a bystander, like can't make that one or something. It'd be wild. Or like, uh, if he attacks a bystander, he puts them on his card and then, you know, like choose a power they have once per turn and use it. You know, use or a bystander like, yeah, or, or, or equipment on his card, and like he can use a power from it or something. He can choose an opposing character that can generate a bystander. Um, <laughs> And then, like, as a free action, they can't generate it, and he generates it instead. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. yeah. Something like him putting it away and then also being able to take it out at a later time. But he yeah. doesn't really do that with the characters. He only no, does he doesn't, the... like, go fight for me, you know? That would also like be it... something Heist Nebula could possibly do is oh. free, freeing all free, that like, stuff. like, the bystanders. Somehow. Yeah. Something. Double power action to equip. Yeah. Okay. Um... I could see Ultron Affinity just like buffing the other Ultrons, like Pat, like other Ultrons. Like it wouldn't work obviously in this set. Like he wouldn't have much synergy. I mean, he shouldn't have synergy with anything in this set. There's no one who's on his team besides himself. So he needs to be a good, good beat beat stick. But uh, it's iffy. Yeah, it's iffy. It's um, hard to do to do a 300 point character because like if you wanted a boss battle he would have to be about 300 points. It's hard to do a 300 point character that one has the stats to like back up 300 points and two 
has like powers that can actually beat a 300 point team like yep. 650 point characters without getting at, out actioned um without being like completely locked down with like barrier and stop clicks and like we've seen mm-hmm. how like whatever the new galactus like just cannot stand toe to toe with like a solid 300 point team really can't it's rough that's i mean i definitely hope this ultron has a high point line but i also hope he has a usable lower point line because otherwise he's just going to be like a shelf piece if he's yeah if he's got like the 250 200 300 that kind of point line he'll never like see play not unless they really knock it out of the park and i could i could write out a dissertation on what all they need for him to be able to do but essentially would be like all right he's got to be able to have full speed charge and running shot he's got to be able to free action make someone immobile he's got to be able to free action barrier free action smoke <laughs> like all the things a modern 300 point team is going to bring to the table for like four actions he's got to be able to do with one <laughs> yeah like truly True. that's just, he's got to he has to yeah yeah that's not even me like being like (laughs) that's not even me going like crazy or anything literally if you want a 300 point one man army to be able to compete with uh like a sky tyrant tk alpha strike kind of team he has to be able to do the same thing and it's just not there but please whiskers please give this man triple bolt or some way to target multiple characters the last few one man armies that we've wanted to be good like beast one man armies have not had triple bolt or the ability to target characters right away. Like you see him blow up multiple that. planets with ease. Yeah, the dude's biting the galaxy. Come on, yeah. and make him good. He should be nuts. He should be of all one man armies that we've had. Like, got to be better than God Doom, very least. You know, it's like God Doom was fine. He was fine at a hundred points, but you couldn't play him at one man army level of stuff. But this Ultron no. needs to be able to be on a team by himself, and he has to be able to absolutely slap. Like, I need to feel like I have to bring a crew of people from around the universe to try to beat this guy. And not you just know, not him... just like build a good team to beat him, but also like kind of get lucky, right? Yeah. Like, I, yeah, that's what they had. That's to do. That's part yeah. of the fun of a boss battle. It's not like, oh yeah, I outbuilt like what I needed for the boss. Like right. it's not fun when you go in like in a game when you go in overly prepared and just like walk over the boss. Right. But it's what not, is like, fun is talent. if like you have to use skill techniques, you know, random stuff like that, and a little bit of luck to pull off a win. I don't know. That's just my opinion on it. Maybe some so, people hate losing, but I find losing to be one of the more fun parts of the game. Sometimes I I like losing when i could see a chance at me winning yeah like i'm okay it's if the, the game struggle is that makes it fun yeah it's the, the struggle is what makes it fun like if the game is like solitaire where it's like nine times out of ten i just lose because it's so random then it's not like fun but if it's like just you know a difficult hero clicks or you know recently i've been getting into marvel champions this living card game it's very much a you got to play an almost perfect game not so much have great luck but a little bit of luck and then you can win, you know, like that's fun. I like it when it's that hard. And it's like, ah, shot, shoot, I lost, I lost, I lost. Maybe I lose a few times and then I win. Like that is awesome. I, I do like characters like that, you know, because I honestly want to be able to just, you know, we talk about the scenario packs. I want this Ultron Infinity to put him on a team and like try to play a scenario like that with the multiverse ones. And like, that's fun. That'd be really, really cool. And it's like, shoot. You know, I wish they would make more boss battle hero clicks like that, where more Definitely. so than any scenario that they make in a pack, I would rather just try to like keep trying to beat Galactus, keep trying to beat this Ultron Affinity. Like that would be really, really fun. Um we've talked about this for like fifty minutes to an hour. <laughs> um I think we we can because like in three days we might be totally wrong and this yeah. is going to be the worst is, age yeah. podcast ever. Hero so, clicks bets. Oh. Uh, we're just trying to guess. Hopefully, our best guesses are um, close because I think I think we know. we designed a pretty solid set. I think we said some fun things. Yeah, I'm ready to be disappointed, but I'm very hopeful that I'm not. I'm really hopeful right. that like 
day one scott pulls the the god pack and he's like all right well here's the five chases that simeon bruce is interested in and (laughs) then i'll know if this set because yeah people are suggesting people other people pre-order this and i'm suggesting you don't until we see the dials yes this set might sell out but you really don't want to lock in a pre-order if I mean, maybe you do with your local shop because they might actually not be able to pre-order it after a certain point. But you never know. But yeah, if the dials just dials and powers are just lame, I mean, maybe you just want we'll shelf pieces. I guess that's we'll fine that. too. See, you don't say that. Please don't say that. Too. Yeah, I'm hopeful. Hear me. The set, like the design of like a lot of the figures, is really cool. Uh, we haven't seen any of the actual sculpts, but the terrain, the like you know, the, the actual sculpt size and detail work looks really good. So I'm hoping we'll see. All right. Let's go ahead and jump into the questions. There are dozens of us. Dozens! Malcolm Rush, this is our third week of doing the Malcolm Rush Challenge here. He is saying, choose one figure. I mean, this is what we're doing. We're choosing one figure from every set that is a must-get for us. Um... We are now in the age of this sort of Bronze Age, right? This is Oreo dials, but it ends at silver. So it's from Superman to uh, Uncanny X Men slash Civil War OP kit right before Superior Foes of Spider Man. So it is old style cards with Oreo dials. There is a lot. This is six years of sets because it's 2011 to 2016. So really like five years, like kind of half years there, but still it's, it's a lot of figures, guys. So. Bear with us, Simeon. Are you ready? You got your list. Yes. We're just we're gonna we're gonna rattle these. Maybe say a quick one thing or whatever. Uh, from Superman set, I chose Lex Luthor. Oh yeah. Uh, from the Superman set, I went with good old Magog. From Incredible Hulk, I went with the only time this guy's been the hero clicks, John Jameson. And uh, I went with the Punisher. So it's technically two. It's the weapon swap Punisher. Of course. Uh, from Galactic Guardians, I went with Hollywood. Good old Hollywood. Um, from Galactic Guardians, I went with Mole Man. Mm. I actually prefer yeah. the original the old, to the yeah, Legacy that's card. Way better. Way better. Uh, from Chaos War, I went with the, I think, iconic Chaos War Hawkeye. Okay, yeah. I went with Sentry and Void. Mm-hmm. It's pretty expensive still. I mean, it's it's a chase, but of course. It's still a really okay. cool piece. Uh, from the Batman set, I went with uh, the namesake of one of our shows, the Bad Samaritan. Oh, I went with the, uh, I don't know if it was the marquee or the LE figure or whatever, but it's the Batman standing in front of the stained window, set Ooh, number 100. Cool. His dial isn't amazing, but the sculpt is really good. Beats of Gotham. I chose one of my legacy card picks from a few episodes ago, Guy Gardner. That Batman was from Streets of Gotham. Oh, um, okay. So it wasn't from Batman. I, I skipped ahead. Um, That's all right. Yeah, I'll go with uh, good old Booster Gold from the Batman Ooh. set. Um, amazing Spider Man. I went with my boys, Man Thing and Howard the Duck. All right, I went with the super rare Nightmare. From Teen Titans, I chose Cyborg, the common 025 Cyborg, not the team-based one. I went with Bunker. Of course he did. Yeah. Uh, from <laughs> Wolverine and the X-Men, I went with 039, Big Bertha. I went with uh, 050, Mojo. Still, you want to talk about alternate win styles and alternate win conditions. Um, this guy doesn't do that, but he's got some really crazy stuff that makes your opponent play a completely different way. Um, from Invisible Iron Man, I went with my boy, Chain Gun for America, Detroit Steel. Nice. I went with the best member of Alpha Flight, uh, 040 Shaman. Um, no lies to detect, that is correct. Um, did you do Yu-Gi-Oh? Did you choose one from Yu-Gi-Oh, Simeon? I did, yeah. Okay, uh, then I chose 037. Go! Uh, I already botched his accent. YG, you uh, go flame swordsman or whatever. He's not British, he's <laughs> Boston, but whatever. I chose Joey Wheeler's best freaking card in his deck, flame swordsman, or at least my favorite. All right, 
I there's a lot of stuff from this set to choose from, but I went with Good. Morphine Jar zero three one. It's the old God, swap God, you? stop starting you're, areas you're with your a opponent. Scumbag. <laughs> yeah. Uh, from Superman and Legion of Superheroes or Slosh, I went with Lex Luthor, who is smarter than all of you combined. I went with zero five zero Toy Man. From Deadpool, this was a hard set. Deadpool is one of my all time favorite sets. I. I went with Weasel, but it was such a close second to Blind Owl. So close to Blind yeah. Owl. Yeah. There's tons of good stuff in this set. I went with 050 Wolverine and X23, the duo figure. I've probably played that figure the most out of any figure I, I own. I know I hear you mention it a lot. It is yeah. a favorite of yours for sure. It, I mean, so. it's just, it's got a lot going for it. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. No, totally. Uh, another set that was tough to choose, War of Light. I went with Red Lancer and Guy Gardner. All right. I've also talked about this character pretty much any time War of Light comes up, but it's Carousel, number 037, with the pack. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, another really difficult set. Um, <laughs> I wanted to choose a zombie team base, but it was not on the main set, so instead I chose Sleepwalker. Ooh. For some reason, Sleepwalker was like always broken. Like everyone like that I ever saw, the sculpt was physically reason. broken. Really, like the sculpt was broken. No yeah. way. Oh man, I, I had a few of these guys that didn't break. That's that's a bummer. Um, because that's the one with the. Let me pull up the sculpt. That's the, the one. With he's the, got uh, Rick Jones. Sleeping. Yeah, I don't. It he's might like not actually be Rick Jones, but it's like somebody. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't own a ton of this set, so I just went with the one thing that I'd really like to own, and those zero six two super scroll zombie chase. <laughs> I think okay. if you're going to buy something from the uh, set, it should be the zombie chase. Be, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, flash that. I went with 026, a Rainbow Rider. Nice. That's a fun piece. Um, I went with 037B, Dark Flash. Uh, Speed Force tokens are awesome. Yeah. And now that most of that set doesn't take pushing damage when taking a second option, it makes them even better. Uh what is this now? Just League Trinity War. I went with Subterfuge Lex Luthor. Ooh, I went with Alexander Luthor Sr. Good Ooh. old Mazaz. Ah, nice. The 210 point steel steel uh, powers from KO'd figures. Yeah. Uh, from Avengers Assemble, I went with Chase. Nova Helmet Steve Rogers. Okay, I went with 034 Jarvis. I just think he's Ooh. neat. Uh, from Avengers, or not Avengers, excuse me, Age of Ultron, I went with War Machine. Okay. I went with the Super Rare Black Panther. It's just a, it's a cool sculpt. Oh, yeah. Uh, Nick Fury, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I chose Agent Coulson. I went with 056, Nick Fury. Ooh. Pew, pew, watch your You're scumbag. You're yeah. a scumbag for choosing that. Uh, from Superman and Wonder Woman, I went with the Atom. I went with a figure I haven't played in a while, but probably got the most mileage out of for a super rare. Zero six zero, Mister Mixel. Oh, I forgot about him. Yeah, fifth dimensional imp, something like that. Oh yeah, it says it's one of his powers. Little imp from yeah. the fifth dimension. Little okay. imp from the fifth dimension. Little guy. Uh, from World's Finest, I went with my boy Rex Mason, the Ant Man. I went with good old 064 KC Green Lantern. Ooh. Rocking that running shot uh, range combat expert top dial. Pretty good stuff. From um, Uncanny X-Men, I had to, oh, again, choose my boy, John Proudstar, a.k.a. Thunderbird. Oh, is that the one that KOs himself? That's the one that, yeah, punching a fighter jet. When he uses exploit <laughs> weakness, when he does, KO him after actions resolve. Uh, let me see what the H what HC Realms comments say on this. Uh, let's see. Let it be known that I was able to punch a fighter jet tonight. I told my opponent and spectators, this is the reason why you've never heard of Thunderbird. The Thunderbird. <laughs> um, I went with 054 Quicksilver. He's got the hypersonic speed that he can use flurry with and he also had that speed marker that he could make attacks from that speed marker and uh did you choose from civil war i did okay uh from civil war i this might shock some more because i'm only doing main set here but i chose someone who's pro registration even though personally of course i fall on the anti-registration side oh. but uh i chose 26 taskmaster 
Interesting. I went with uh, Tony Masters, good old 026 Taskmaster. Oh, what? We really did share a pick. I mean, wow. probably I like, the only really solid through? thing from that main set. Wow. For me, at least. Wow. That was like, I don't think we've shared a figure so far, have we? I don't Maybe. think so. I was oh, I was man. so yeah. sure that we were going to pick that same one that I almost said mine at the same time you said yours. But I was like, yeah. no, he maybe he picked Falcon. It's possible. Like, I, I do like, I was looking at that Falcon too. That Falcon, that Falcon is, cool. is kind of how I want the other Falcon um, to work too. You know? Yeah. I, I actually, there's a couple things in the set that I liked. Um, and the sculpts were really solid too. Like I, I liked Jack O'Lantern. I liked Radioactive Man sculpt. Um, yeah. Like, you know, I also thought you might pick the Battlestar the good old Lamar Hoskins, the last one that we got, he's in that set. Oh yeah, I, I almost picked him too. But when I think of like what I played a lot from that set, it was all the LEs. It was like that Captain America that takes some damage, Captain Iron America, um, that Namor. He like yeah. huh, he won at WKO, and I was like, what, what? I was like, that's so cool. Um, but then I played the heck out of this Taskmaster. He just has such a cool fun dial man yeah namor punisher and taskmaster were the things i played yeah the dude most of the, set. Yeah, the, the rare punisher from the main yes. set not the uh yes 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 the garbage le one what was what did he do he like had to like suction sneak. cup punisher who yeah can, like, electronic to an opponent's suction starting cups. area and he can like outwit him or something i don't know yeah, it's so, so weird I, I did wouldn't. want to build never... a team with the express purpose of getting that Punisher to I'm, the starting I'm sorry, area, but if you ever be? give me a Frank Castle who has in-cap and no range, I'm going to assume you had a stroke because Dude, I that's do what not he did. know who this that's is. That's what he did in the comics, though, man. I guess. He looks like he a did. mocap this was, suit. This was Stealth Mission Punisher. No, these are his... Oh, no, they weren't suction cups. What were? Oh, yeah, it was like he was trying to breach the Fantastic Four's defenses, the Baxter Infiltration building. Infiltration suit dampeners. Infiltration dampeners. He's dampening stuff. <laughs> outwit. Dampeners. If he occupies an opponent's starting area, when he uses outwit, he might target any opposing character, regardless of range or line of fire. Yeah, dude. Isn't that worth 60 points? Getting him, you know, he's got 17 willpower uh, and nothing to protect. Oh, he's got stealth. Excuse me. Pardon me. Opposing characters can't use improved targeting ability to target the Punisher, which is a little nice. But anyways uh okay that's all of those questions uh twitter filled us for questions so we're just going to move right to discord um we already answered some of these but for the next ones let's try to get these through pretty quickly because this is a longer episode than it should be and i guarantee by the time we're done recording 20 minutes will pass and we're gonna have to add something um uh, mandalore mccall asks how would you design a dial for himiko toga from i hear academia Matt, blah 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 blah, blah. Himiko Toga, who are you? I don't know any She's of their the names. Blood turn into oh, people. Oh, my lady. my guess was that she was the chick that made things out of her body. No, that's Blood she Girl. Is, okay. Yeah, she is the um, one that uh, keeps like syringes on her. So she's like shape change, right? Because she can be yep. other people. Yeah, she could have a pretty good shape change role. Does she get better with blood? What does she get? What does she need blood for? Does that power her? I don't. Understand. She well, she takes she on their form. Their blood? To, okay, that's she, yeah. What it she is. needs it to take on their form, as, okay. as far as I know. She needs it to take on their form, and then uh, she's she just also a, does get some of their power. Eternal reward spy from Team Fortress Two. That is exactly her power. Is that when she stabs you, <laughs> she becomes you? I don't mean that's, <laughs> there you go. that's the joke. Five people might get listening to this podcast. Okay, makes a close combat attack, and then is like a friendly character for your opposing team, but like they can't target her. Maybe she just can't be targeted by can't opposing be targeted until she's yeah. like the yeah sure. something where she like. If she hits, she gives out some sort of token, and then she can't uh, be targeted until uh, either that token's gone or the character with it's gone or something. Yeah. Okay. Um, what do you, is that we're kind of in consensus about, about um, that? Yeah, and probably? Then probably something where she can take a power from somebody that she's copying. Because, yeah, she can... Uh, can she use their powers? She can, yeah. Oh... Yeah, she doesn't just like look like them. She can also. Um... I it has been so long since I've seen I Hear Academia, like a year or two since I've watched any episodes with her. Yeah, I I, I, I don't think I watched a ton of the arc after she appeared, so I have to. It's been like 2019 because 
I was gonna go see whichever movie was released, and then the AMC oh, shut heroes. down because the oh, uh, rip. pipes broke. Es- so Espatellas have yeah. Oh, pipes broke. Yeah, sure. Well, yeah, <laughs> pipes broke, and then Despatellas. <laughs> okay, it's a double whammy. I just I always AMC assume whenever you say whenever you say a movie theater closed, I just you know yeah or anything happened. at this point anything that yeah, closes any anything that closes it was like it was a few years ago it closed down. I'm like oh because of the thing wink wink <laughs> yeah uh. Okay, um, and then he also asks if you could redesign the Yu-Gi-Oh! Hero Clicks Curry Bow for modern age. How would you do it? Um, Curry Bow like just blocks attacks, right? That's like, he's Curry he's the explodey one. Right? He blows up. Oh, well there no, there was two. Her. So there was the there series two. one super rare, and that then there was the up, and then there was the other one that protected you. Okay, I always think of like a protection type thing. So I would give him like one of those abilities where. When a when attack would target a friendly character, it targets him instead, even if it would be like illegal, you okay. know, like a um a, a Captain Marvel Prime type version, you know, um, yeah, and yeah, give him super senses on a four through six, so like they have to target him, and then well maybe you just miss him, but you know make him, I think an even fifty points instead of a forty six points, maybe give him an eighteen defense instead, keep him tiny, keep him flying. Um, get sure blades. I, I give him blades with zero damage. Yeah, blades. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Uh, can't outwit the super the super senses the uh the defense power that gives him super senses and uh, get down Mr. President ability. That's what I would do. Uh, what are you thinking? That yeah, on I mean his dial still works like as as is. Um, both of them are still like point costed cheap enough where you could actually put them on teams and be fine. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I think that'd be fine. Um, next up, uh, he, he asked a question about which is our favorite con exclusive so far, which we answered. So that's dope. Uh, Alex, we already answered this one in our thing. Uh, Chance asked a meme question, which is when is Simeon going to start dial D for Dice Masters? The answer is never, but Simeon, go ahead. Yeah. D cubed, as we call it, is a project that will never see the light of day. <laughs> Um, Dice Masters just isn't popular enough anymore around here. So yeah, um, we do have unreleased footage of D cubed. Dial D for uh, Dice Masters. Dude, we do actually. Do we have a little bit of that? No, Maybe, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was, sometimes I can't remember. We have so many projects unreleased to yeah. the public right now. I forget. Like what we just talked about and what we've maybe actually filmed. Sometimes we joke about something and then actually do it, and sometimes we yeah. joke about something and <laughs> never revisit it. Um, Mandalore McCall asks again, if you had to move to a neighboring state, which one would it be and why? Um, I don't like, oh, is it? Yeah. Wyoming. See, you're, you fit a Wyoming vibe for sure. I think I would kill myself if I lived in Wyoming. I, I find (laughs) Wyoming. They do have the highest suicide rate per capita. (laughs) Oh, do they? Oh no. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Accurate. Oh no. Yeah. Um, the thing about Wyoming is it's so boring. It's desolate. And that's and I desolate. think that's part of a why. Why because like nobody like likes it. moving there. But yeah. Um. um no, I I uh, like I like camping. I like hiking. They've got a, lot, a bunch of trails and stuff. But then also it's just it's close to like uh, Fort Colorado. Collins, Colorado. Yeah. Um. It's close it's to near... like you know. It depends on where I guess in Wyoming. Really other but... you you would be next. You'd be on the other side of Nebraska though, from where you are now. In yeah, Wyoming. but like, it's also it's also side. closer to my favorite part of Nebraska, which is oh, sure. uh, like Valentine area. So true. Valentine is I do like Valentine. The actually. only downside not is there, but like I do enjoy having like larger venues around me and stuff, so I can actually not have to travel to see shows that I want to see. Um, yeah almost nothing goes to wyoming and as far as i know there's let me look it up on the wind because i don't think that there's like ever been a wyoming state there, i don't know there has been a states so remember a few years ago we saw like the states prizing for wyoming and it was like the earth x um rebirth prizing and it was like maybe oh. four or five people were there it was very few but there are people that play in wyoming i've met them at nationals before i'm sorry i par- apologize for not remembering your guys names it's been a few years um, but I did remember I did I did meet people that played in Wyoming, and I did want to like go to their states one time if it wasn't so far away. 
Um, and like, I like Rio, Rodeo. I almost said Ryodio. That would have been weird. Uh, I like Rodeo and stuff like as much as the next guy and probably more so than the next guy. Um, like maybe living in Cody wouldn't be terrible. I know I couldn't live in Wyoming. Like Hero Clicks is a, and maybe because I'm saying this because I'm so deprived from it right now. It's been like seven weeks since I've been able to play Hero Clicks. But, like, I need to be able to play Hero Clicks, like, weekly. So, like, Montana, Wyoming, North Dakota, and Minnesota are all out. Um, it's probably between Nebraska and Iowa. I wouldn't want to live in Iowa because it's Iowa and Iowa's gross. Um, so <laughs> I mean, Des Moines is cool. Des Moines got stuff mm, going on. I'd have, to, I'd have to, like, look at, like, certain laws and taxes and stuff and look more into, like, that um, <laughs> to see, like, how they compare to South Dakota. Like that's like the big thing, um, income tax and whatever, which is nice. Not having that in South Dakota, which is cool. But uh, yeah, I'll have to like double check laws and stuff for like Iowa and Nebraska. But like I've been to Nebraska enough. I'm like, yeah, Nebraska's fine. It's just Nebraska people, Oscars fans is what I mean by Nebraska people <laughs> who I cannot stand. I mean, Simeon's in agreement there, yeah. so it's fine. But um, yeah. Yeah, it'd be between them. I really like Montana, but again, I don't think anyone plays Hero Clicks there. And I know no one there listens to our podcast, so shame on you, Montana. But otherwise, I would like Montana. I like trees. I like. I don't like the desolate wasteland of Wyoming. <laughs> I like trees and mountains Dang. and stuff. So, Sorry. It lo- and I, it's hard to tell which of these are still open or not. Um, because they have like Hastings Entertainment listed as one of the venues, and I'm pretty <gasps> sure they're gone. No, it's not. Yeah, um, they're gone, boy. They're Laramie gone. has, it looks like two, two uh, places that host events, some form of event, not necessarily Hero Clicks, uh, right? D and D painting or something. Yeah, could be anything. Uh, and then Cheyenne, Wyoming has one, two, three. You want to search by events? Maybe search by events and see if there's like any in the wind. Um, I was just searching for stores, but then everything else is Colorado. So the entire rest of the state, it's Laramie or Cheyenne, which makes sense. Those are the two yeah, bigger cities. Because, yeah. Um, but yeah, let's see. Find um, an event. And then the last question we have miles. is from Bill. And I think we might do this on a separate show. Maybe when we actually start looking to go to Silver Age events, but he's asking us like, what are some like must get pieces that you expect to make a comeback in Silver Age? So like automatically, my brain is like AMCAP. I think if you're gonna look into Silver Age at all, AMCAP should be on your on your thoughts, like in your mind, because ID cards are back, the Sam Cap is back. Like that's just a period. Like just Yeah. She's Sam really Cap's good for ID card calling. She's still good. You know, she's got she calls them in after being carried and be as perplex like that's a lot that you want from a id card call in uh yeah. personally oh, yeah a figure i think might make a comeback um anarchy uh big tony could potentially still do stuff like he's obviously not perplexing damage anymore but you know that is something that is out in the ether um i i want to say i think goblin king because now that you don't have to worry about the lack of willpower, mm. the protected outwit isn't as true. big. To... True. I didn't even think about that. Gosh, yeah. Oh, that's rough. Yeah. I hate Goblin King so much. You're right, though. <laughs> yeah. You're so right. No, and I mean, yeah, because like his big thing, I mean, other than choosing powers, was the nightmare tokens, which yeah. just makes him kind of crazy a little but... hard to take out yeah. no there's uh, i mean there's a ton of stuff um yeah honestly like because people haven't played with a lot of this stuff for a couple of years they might like forget but that that plain rare professor x from xavier school being called in and having an eight square bubble that doesn't need line of fire it's like so it's eight squares in every direction which is the majority of the map if he's in the middle of the map um and he gets to target everyone within that with mind control. Like it might be something where you have to run that uh, emotional modifier just to give yourself battle fury, because otherwise he's going to disrupt your whole like formation. Yeah, Ugh. yeah, true. Oh gosh, 
goodness gosh yeah i hate it Ugh, i hate it and hate then, it so much was it did i talk to you about that yondu from guardians of the galaxy yeah. movie too yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah how the, that, yeah. the yaka arrow could potentially so because it's not worded the way um hawkeye is originally he was worse but now for 100 points he potentially could hit like a whole team um it's not good. It's still not good. His stats aren't great. He's a hundred yeah. points, uh, but yeah, he does get to draw a line of. He's like wind guard instead of like Hawkeye. So he's mm -hmm. drawing line of fire from each person he hits rather than running shotting multiple times. I think that could. Yeah, I think that's that's definitely worth looking at. Yeah, and you know he's got whatever. No willpower doesn't matter anymore. No indom doesn't matter. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Damage dealt from him can't be reduced below one, so it's essentially better than precision yeah, strike. Pretty good. Well, other than super senses mm, getting out of it, but yeah, besides that, yeah, yeah. All right, nice. Hey, that's this week's episode. Uh, I'm pumped for Scott Porter's unboxing. We're trying to get this episode up today, so it's got a whole two or so days before people listen to it and be like, ah, "Cringe, they were so wrong." Or <laughs> you'll listen to it and you'll be like, "Whoa, I can't believe guys, how spot on they the were." Future. Yeah. Whoa, hot dog. Yeah. But all right. There is nothing else I want to say. I'm just ready to see some unboxing. I'm ready to see. This is probably the first set where I'm like, I want to know what every common, uncommon, whatever does. You know, like I am yeah. like, yeah, I want to know. Yeah. I'm I want to know more. Close attention. Uh, and if you're going to be paying close attention, if you're ready to hit the trigger on your pre order, you know where you can do that? You can do that at coolstuffinc.com. You can find cool stuff in stock every day including the latest HeroClix singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at coolstuffinc.com. Oh, yeah, that's... Also, also, by the way, join our Patreon. Send us an email at dialytreoclix at gmail.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Join our Patreon. Send us an email. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. All stuff. And big thank you to Ethan Jacobs for becoming a $25 patron. Super support that. We're going to get a t-shirt out to you here in a bit. We're going to get you some awesome action tokens out here in a bit. Thank you so much for supporting us. Thank you to all our patrons that support us because without you, the show would not be possible. We're going to make awesome YouTube content for you. We're going to make awesome podcasts for you guys. Thank you for supporting this beautiful, amazing weekly podcast. Thank you. And like always, happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like a hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Over How they, six uh, people humor? think I am funny. It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which you absolute fools, it's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? Okay, Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. Happy trails.